breathe because uh, again it requires the attachment and then a phone to actually be able to handle That's the software cool. so red orange and yellow guy yeah that means i'm the hottest thing inside the frame ladies yep i knew it was going to work yep look at those grins on your faces okay. um so so we're looking for cold spots by the way bridal parties that slays so don't knock it um no <laughs> <laughs> I usually have one drunk girl and she's on the ground. Um, but anyway, <laughs> blue and black are going to be the cold spots. That's what we're going to be looking for. Yep. Uh, we need them to move or to take shape. You're always going to have blue and black because windshields are going to be colder than everything else. You got the point. Um, when I say take shape, head, shoulders, moving arms and legs. That's what and I want. Shoulders, knees and toes. Knees yeah, and toes. you got it. Yep. Um, so that's your start and stop. And I have normally my 10 to 12 folks. And again, we're trying to find space to invest in. But anyway, where the hell are you? This place used to be the Charles and Eliza Pinkney Mansion. Their mansion sat in the front of the space, facing East Bay Street. Uh, and then Eliza's garden was lined up with Five Church Restaurant over there and came all the way across. And in the back where the two cars are, uh, that's where the servant and slave quarters used to be for the home. So we have two people going to their car behind you, darling, just so you know. Okay, um, I will not be filming them. There you go, just film straight on me if you want. Wow, that's hot. The average for this location is actually between 18 and 22. I get that about five out of seven nights a week. But I will tell you that the highest I've ever seen this device go in my 15 years of ghost hunting has been here. It aired out three times and within a 15 minute time period and stayed within triple digits the remaining time of that 15 minutes. We left, like we got the hell out of here. And what was her name again? Eliza. Eliza. Eliza, what year did you die? Just so you know, she's not in the box. Well, I know. I, know. I, just, <laughs> I just see it on TV. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are like, by the time you think you saw something, it's already gone. So that's why we try to get as much footage as we possibly can. Okay. Well, Good to know. know. What year did you start your business? She wasn't invited. No. I didn't know if she just wasn't invited to come hang out with us. <laughs> like if she was sitting back at the hotel somewhere. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, she, no. Um, this is Charlene's vacation and we came out um, to do what she wanted to do. So this is whatever she wants to do. It's her vacation. Sure. I'm along for the ride. So you are the drag along. Absolutely. <laughs> I normally see the drag husband. Oh, you Could couldn't drag my husband to do this. Oh my god. Like, I'm sure those, they're the hecklers and they sing the Ghostbuster theme all night long. And... Elijah, are you happy? That's a yes no question. That's a yes no question, Charlene. Oh okay, why is he not showing up? Elijah, can you communicate with me, please? Double or nothing? Okay. He was double her age. Oh! <laughs> uh, and their anniversary was literally two days ago. What was that? Her, their wedding anniversary was two days ago. Oh, okay. It was actually kind of funny. Last night we were using like a little Ouija board device um, that I have, and it spelled out I do. Like, for a wedding. So I was kind of like, I was actually very excited about that because they were actually asking about the anniversary because I told them it was the night prior. And, you know, their anniversary was the day prior, and they're like, oh, congrats on your, on your wedding anniversary. And I do spelled out like immediately, like by letter. Like it was like IDO. I was like, are you kidding me right now? Like that's okay. We'll take it. Anything else?
right down there, pretty much nothing. So with that specific hammer, I get about four or five pieces a year that I'll put my stamp of approval on. But if we're not recording, I'm not going to find it. The problem is why I bring it out every, pretty much on a nightly basis. I like how she's using it as a walkie. I think that's hysterical when people do that. I see it all the time. <laughs> I don't know how many ghost tours she's done. The one we did the ghost tour in um, Nashville. Go ahead now. <laughs> Go ahead and keep talking to me. There could have been a ghost in the tower that we caught on camera. Okay. Could have been. And what was bringing on that suspicion? Um. Oh, well, you could see something in the tower move. Oh, just, you know, you're taking click, 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 yeah, click, yeah, click, yeah. and and it's kind of seem to move a, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So we thought we caught something with that last night. And then when I got back to the office, I was very easily able to debunk it. Mm -hmm. So put it in their notes. Like, I was able to debunk this. It was a reflection of light that was giving off that type of... Yeah. I got what the hell now. <laughs> yeah, that's not speech from alive, for sure. Okay. What the hell? I had a quick spike all the way up to 62. I'm still listening, so keep talking. I'd love to communicate with you. That's that board over there. I said, I, I, I got something dark blue, but it's that board. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be cooler than everything yeah. else. I think it's time to call it. Like, I'm not getting a whole lot of anything now. I had a couple of good spikes, but then they just kind of dissipated.
of the slow ones, like what you're doing now, is because when a disembodied voice does come through, it's going to go over more than one to two channels. And I can take that out, if it's suspicious, put it in audio software, and count how many radio stations it actually went over. Uh -huh. um, so anything more than four is usually, like, is a pretty good suspect for okay. a disembodied voice. I have ones that have gone all the way up to 14, uh -huh. like, from this location specifically. Uh -huh. um, so, again, when I'm teaching people, even other paranormal investigators, how to use this method, they're like, really, I'm going to use a radio chatter? I'm like, trust me. I'm like, when you discover how this actually comes about, when you find that one out of 12 per year that I normally get, yeah. it's a oh shit moment. Like, it's really cool stuff when you do find it. Yeah. Instead of like guessing, like, oh, I heard the word hello. Well, super great. Every commercial starts with hello, come by IKEA today. <laughs> like, who gives a shit, right? You can't really verify what that is. Um, so, I did get all the way up to a 62 on the EMF. That's next, a lot. It is. So, your TV set goes between 40 to 60, depending on what's being plugged into it. Your microwave heating up your food is about 150 to 170. So 62 is about the amount of your TV in a space, and it was actually like right around the center area, maybe up to the right a little bit. So again, no electricity over there whatsoever. Shouldn't have this spike. Um, so highest spike ever, aired out, over 200. We got out because I actually have epilepsy. It's too much electricity in the air for the guy with the neurological disorder. So if it's like gonna stay within those ranges, like we're gonna go. So again, I don't stand next to a microwave for too long because it'll provide a headache. Like that's just kind of how things work with me. Um, so, again, a 62, I'm really happy about it, but there's a lot of, like, 20s and 30s in there as well. So I'm actually excited about that, just so you know, this is me excited. Okay. Um, so I know you didn't hear much besides a double or nothing. Yeah. Um, but you probably missed a shit ton. In oh, it head. probably did. Yeah. yeah, and it's every night. That's yeah. why we record it, and I'm going to spot check it, and I'm like, oh, that's how he puts it all together. Yeah. So that's why I do this. Okay. Let's cover the answers. <laughs> uh, and I did notice, this is this my that light dimmed and then went back to bright again. Okay. That these things are weird. I could nothing. They could be. More than likely. Yeah. Um, again, and I've been watching these things for like a year, and half the time I'll come in like on the weekend and I'll shut them off. Like as people are walking around like investigating, like I'll go shut them off just so we don't have those. Yeah. Because I know where the buttons are. I figured it out. They <laughs> can just turn them off. Um, I know. I'm a jerk. I think she figured it out too. No. <laughs> we, I've tried to use them. Like, Eliza, can you make that light over there? you know, turn on, yeah. you know what I mean? But of course you have to explain and do the demonstration of how it works. I'm like, all you gotta do is move in front of this and it brings us some light, because she's not gonna know what, like, what that light is. She's on the 1700s, yeah. she's freaking handy. So again, you have to kind of show and demonstrate. Okay. Eliza Lucas Pinkney, this is the woman we are trying to make contact oh, with. Okay. I use her maiden name because she's the second wife named Eliza and Charles, back to back, same year. Oh my God. First wife died January 1744. Five months later, he marries this one. Yeah. That'd be Jim. <laughs> the first wife also had a maiden name that started with the letter L, but she also went by Eliza L. Pinckney. Her maiden name was Lamb. So sometimes I'll have my folks, depending on how many spirit boxes are at work, go ask which Eliza we're dealing with by asking for her maiden name, Lamb or Lucas. Um, so those are the two. This one marries Charles at the age of 22. Charles was 45. So uh, there's your double or nothing yeah. kind of mentality. So it's a vague stretch because I don't have anything else to verify it, but you got right. to the point where I can tie it together. Uh, the mansion, which I didn't get anything on my word list about it, that's fire damage from the Great Fire of 1861. Again, if we get the word fire burning blaze, we'll often get two or three numbers from the date of when this happened, December 11th. 12, 11, and 61 are very specific numbers. Imagine my surprise when we get 12, 11, 61 and the word fire all in the same evening, and I don't know what the correlation is, and I discover it when I go back to the office and do the research. Right. Like, this is how I learn about this shit, ladies. Again, not the city telling me of what I have to teach you out here. Um, so every tour, even carriage tours, are going to tell you about every great fire that we've had, or some great fire, because we've had dozens. Mm -hmm. This is the fire that took out the mansion, literally from one side of the peninsula all the way to the other. You're standing on the green dot. So again, oh. $9 million worth of damage, and it took the Ashley River to actually put it out. So this was a giant fire. Yeah. The children, uh, it's just kind of a sore subject, unintentionally. Yeah. You know, my guest has pissed her off, um, but that's okay. I caught it real quick. I didn't quick. mean to. I, I apologize. <laughs> oh, a lot of people, like, well, they want to know, like, what happened to our children? How did they die? I just want to know how many. <laughs> so there, yeah. there were four. Okay. Um, I'm going to touch base on all four of them, just so you know what I'm looking for when I get back to the office, and you'll see kind of how this goes down. First child you already know about, Charles, uh, he's signed signer of the Constitution, right? Next child, Thomas, fought in a Revolutionary War battle and was captured by the British after being shot in his left leg. When they released him, he was left on a cane and a limb for the rest of his days. You can see the very specific clues that will pop up with him. I didn't get anything on my word list about it, nor did you, on your spare box. The next child is the reason why I don't hand the questions to strangers, baby George. He didn't make it. 
June of 1747, he's born and passed. Mm -hmm. His death certificate only says June of 1747 in both the birth and death columns. So we don't know how old he was, but I have a guesstimate. He's named, which means you wouldn't name a child back then until they were baptized or christened. So it's going to take about two weeks, then that's the church rushing it if they know that the child is ill from birth. So I'm going to guess that George was at least two weeks old. So that's a pretty decent estimate yeah. just based off of what's going on. The other weird thing about George is he does not have a headstone or a grave. I have a theory on that too. As soon as the bike goes by. The church may have allowed the family to mummify the baby and keep him in the home in a tomb waiting for mom to pass away so he could be buried with her. Aww. It's going to get even more weird when I tell you about Eliza's death. One more child. Her name is Harriet. I don't talk about her much because we don't hear from her much. It's been about two years, to be honest with you. But she married Daniel Ory. If you're not familiar with our coast, that's Myrtle Beach. That's It's in Ory County. Um, so it wouldn't have been a two and a half hour car ride for Eliza to go visit her daughter. Lots of letter writing back and forth between the two of them. So if we do hear from Harriet, we'll get words like quill, ink, paper, published. Those kinds of things will pop up. So again, don't hear from her often. Her death, which were your major questions. She was 70 years old when she passed away. You guys both know that that's a long time for a woman to be alive back then. She was going to Philadelphia, getting treatments for whatever they thought she had. It turned out to be breast cancer. We didn't know what that was in 1793, the year that she died. We're going based off her medical records. So, take that for what it's worth. She died in Philly, which means she's buried in Philly. That should raise two questions in the back of both of your brains. The first question, maybe George. If my theory's true, they're going to transport his team from here all the way to Philadelphia. You guys are old enough to remember the game Oregon Trail? Somebody's going to die of dysentery on that trip, because it's going to be at least three weeks long. Uh, second thing is, is if she's up there, what the hell are we doing down here in the middle of an empty parking lot with one car in it? I don't take you to cemeteries because it is minimal activity at best. Um, even if there are ghosts coming and going, passing through, I can't tell who the hell they are, and I actually like to build relationships with who I'm working with. Um, so that's, and by the way, neither one of you are going to stare at your headstone when you're gone. You're going to go to your mansion site 400 miles away, which is exactly why we are standing here. It's the place where you love the most. Raised emotion. Yeah. That's, that's the key term that I like to use because she raised her family here, fell in love here, and learned about her indigo here. This is raised emotion. Now, the other piece, oh, by the way, take a guess who the president was that was a pallbearer at the funeral. What year was it? 1793. Oh. Jefferson? <laughs> Probably Lincoln. <laughs> I don't know. 1793. I can't help you. George? Um, Final answer? Lincoln. It was Washington. It was, I was George. It was George. 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 Now, George really? slept wow. at the King George. Now, here's why yeah. I'm actually excited why you guys didn't figure it out right away. When we got over here, I told you, I'm not going to give you questions like what color was George Washington's white horse. I do that on purpose. I subliminally put George Washington in the back of your brain, so both pass with a fail, even though your, your third guess was George. I was kind of <laughs> like, eh, she didn't guess the first time. Um, but I do that on purpose. But at his own request, he wanted to pay homage to Eliza because of her indigo. And look at the country started. Like, it was a big deal to him. Um, so, again, he probably wasn't physically handling her coffin, but probably walked with the succession. Um, so, we could have had Big John stuff over here, Pinkney Mansion stuff over there. So again, that's what I call bleed over because we are close enough in proximity. Even though the two ghosts are from two different centuries, they will kind of collide. We didn't get anything, at least in real time. Have you never watched the TV show Ghosts? Like the comedy? Yeah. I'm watching it right now, again. <laughs> they collide. Yes. Uh, the Viking cracks me up every time. I love the Viking. Um, obviously, Vikings are kind of a thing in our house that's weird going on. This is the wife's idea, just so you guys know. Like, I've had the beard now for six or seven months, and I've been clean shaven for most of our marriage. And she's like, let's get you back to the beard. And like, you really, and I always had just like close cut. She's like, let's get it long and Viking, and we'll put beads and shit in there. I'm like, okay, let's do it. I don't care. That works for yeah. you, babe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's all about it. Um, and I anyway. don't have to shave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of trimming. It's actually more work to upkeep this than it is to shave every day. Uh -huh. That's what I told Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of upkeep. And of course she has to get me the oils and this, you know, special beard shampoo yeah. that she likes the smell of and you know all of the things. Like my my bathroom, because we have separate bathrooms because the way the house is set up, is all beard stuff all <laughs> over the damn place. Like I've got all the combs and the brushes. I have a beard straightener, so I, I'm I'm poker straight every day. Otherwise it just looks like a curly mess, like I'm homeless. You know, <laughs> so and it's great. It. Yeah. So we she, saw that guy earlier. Oh yeah. But she's the one who bought all those things. She's like, if you're gonna grow the beard, we're gonna do it right. Whatever. Anyway, back to the proximity piece. <laughs> Where we're going, we're going to be inside of an alley, and I'm going to be relying on that proximity and bleed over, because we're going to go in there, I'm going to stir shit up by telling you what goes on in that location, and then we're going to leave. When we leave, that's where I have to kind of watch around the corner to see what's going on with those spaces to see where we're going next, but we will get bleed over from the alley 
into wherever we're going next because we're really close to each other. So that's the hope. However, to understand the alley, you have to be in the alley. So that's kind of the whole mentality of why I like to take you, you know, at least a quarter of the way inside. Um, and then we're going to be running a few experiments like after that. So I'll explain those like as we kind of get rolling. Okay. Um, and if we have to go to a separate space, you and I are going to actually uh, swap cameras. Like I'll give you a new camera to play with okay. just because we're going to be dealing with an apparition. And that camera oh, cool. <laughs> um, is not going to be able to pick it up in the sense that I want to because that's the one we, we used last night where I was able to debunk it right away. Um, once I got back to the office, so I want to try one of the other cameras to see if we can capture it that way. Um, so you are on record right now. So no, I'm not. Am I? You are. I can see it. You probably hit it by accident. Um, it's okay. More um, than likely. Yeah, so when we get into the alley, um, just kind of keep the nice little belly shot. Okay, so that's, we're on record there. You got it. Okay. You got to give it a second. I don't think I'm on. Did you break it again? Yeah, probably. Yeah, you're on. Okay. You're good. So you just want to turn it. Does how long will this take from here? Sound like anything? Flip the camera. You got the camera Down. on your right. Nope. Okay. Camera three times. Oh, I touched the screen five more times. Record. There you okay. go. <laughs> Damn it! You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Even before the tour is over. <laughs> earlier than this. She made it at least to the wrong location. Um. <laughs> My son works for Best Buy. Okay. And he's always fixing things for her. <laughs> yeah, uh, something in my blood. I okay. will do the same thing, same thing I've done for many years. All of a sudden. It just doesn't work anymore. Just doesn't work anymore. And then he'll come and he'll do the, do the same I did and I just did that. But he'll do it, and it works. Yeah, it's true. It's true. She's no. She saw I've seen it. first firsthand. Yep. I'm not lying. My wife worked for Best Buy before she switched careers into what she's doing now, which is what she's going to school for. But she was actually um, like Geek Squad tech on the other end of the phone. Okay. So, so she did that from home for a while. So now, still, my father-in-law, when he calls the house, he's like, "I'm looking for my Geek Squad girl. Where's she at?" Because he's got some <laughs> Wi-Fi thing that's busted. Because he's like yeah. us and has a million things on Wi-Fi at home. Uh, but he loves the technology. So, so for Mother's Day, he just got me this watch, the iWatch, iPhone watch. And I said, you realize you just got me more technology that you're going to have to help right. me with. <laughs> you know? They do the same thing. Help them out with their garage door opener that runs on Wi-Fi, so that way all they got to do is pull in the driveway and the garage goes up. Um, it also has a pass key for uh, all of their deliveries, which is super high tech for Pennsylvania, as you guys already know. Um, so yeah, so like the Amazon guy had questions, like, are you serious, dude? You work for Amazon. But anyway, uh, back to Ralph. Ralph tells. Ralph. The, yes, yeah, let's Ralph. go back to Ralph. Ralph tells the doc, dude, I know this guy. He knows the coachman. He's gonna try to kill you. Just come with me. I got friends at 59 Church Street. You can rent a room from them, and you'll be safe and good to go. Doc took him up on the offer. They became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. His medical practice is taking off. Um, so he's doing pretty well for himself. And Amanda gets wind of this. She's moving down so they could be married. Dr. Ladd then became known as the Whistling Doctor. This is the reason why I hate this story. Men whistled all the time in the 1700s. Um, so I hate the story because every haunted city you're ever going to visit has a cliched whistling ghost. Ours just happens to be a doctor. The problem with this guy is there's actually proof of this shit. Um, it actually pisses me off because it's a big old giant cliche. As a writer and somebody who studied English, that's a problem for me. Anyway, let's talk about Don't the duels. Don't talk much. <laughs> let's talk about Noted. the duels. Her <laughs> English is horrible. Yeah, I constantly good. correct her. Mm -hmm. My wife, when we... And then she said, I don't care. I'll just get talked the way I want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just sound ignorant. It's okay. She, the worst one she hates is water. Well, that's how you say it. Yeah. That, but uh, your, your grammar. Oh. My wife actually will go through and correct her text messages to me but to make sure that they're grammatically correct before I will like rip her a new one. Like I will just, I won't let it go. Like, <laughs> really? Your ellipsis only has two periods in it? Come on. Like, like I'm that person. Um, <laughs> I'm a jerk, I know. But she loves me to pieces. Anyway, <laughs> duels. Why are we in Dueler's Alley if we're sitting here talking about a doctor? Dr. Ladd and Ralph go see plays together. They can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. He gets better seats. So they go see Richard III one night from Shakespeare. On the way home, they're discussing the new actors they just saw. The doctor thought she was great. Ralph didn't. Then Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. It got really ugly. They go their separate ways. 
where Ralph goes to his friends at the newspaper and places an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of Dr. Ladd. Oh. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of shit. Doc saw the ad and rebuttaled with, let's go to Dueler's Alley. Somebody's gonna die. Keep in mind that this argument started over an actress. I'd just like to point that out because it's really dumb and stupid. Anyway, yeah. two gents came down, back to back, took their ten paces away, but they turned. Doc points his gun in the air, shoots his one shot. He did not want to kill his friend. He just wanted the courage to show up. But Ralph has his one bullet still, and he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. Doc didn't die, fell to the ground. His friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later, November 2nd of 1786, after refusing medical treatment. Oh, wow. Two things about that. <laughs> 1786. Gunshot wounds back then, a lot different than what we know of them now. Secondly, he's a doctor. He probably just thought he had lead poisoning and tried to bleed it out himself, but obviously he failed. Every ghost story that comes down here, which is everyone in town, would tell their guests to listen for the whistles. We have a camera running right now, plus my voice recorder. If we're going to capture a disembodied whistle, we're more than likely going to show up on one of those two devices. However, your spear box. Can't tell you how many times, I'm talking probably hundreds at this point, for the amount of time I've been coming here, we have the whistling part of a song, and then the word doctor from a commercial immediately after. <laughs> doctor oh. happens all the time. I don't look for it, it just, again, you know what minutes I look at. So yeah. when it shows up, I'm like, man, again, dude. Um, so again, we get all kinds of things. Now, you guys just got into town, which means you're going to be here for a little while. If you decide to walk all the way through this alley without me, because I can't take you all the way down because I've been kicked out of this alley before. Oh. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. That's the fun <laughs> part. Um, so <laughs> I know, right? I told you, you guys signed up for the weirdo. Um, but if you use the voice recorders from your phone trying to capture those whistles, just remember every local knows the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street, we all throw a whistle down this alley. It's just what we do here. So just kind of keep that in mind. So let's talk about how I got kicked out of here. Yeah. The alley Do didn't, tell. <laughs> alley didn't go all the way through this way before it was Dueler's Alley. So there was a wall about halfway between the gate of where we're standing and Cumberland Street, the street we came in on. Yeah. So the wall up there was there because this used to be called Cow Alley. This is where they kept the livestock for the city of Charleston. So cows, goats, and chickens are all through here. So why am I telling you this? The bricks down on the other side are older than the bricks we're standing on. Those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint in one of those bricks down there from a slave child, and there's fingerprint swipes in others. And I used to take my groups all the way through, just for a history lesson. There's nothing paranormal about that. The reason why is you already know how I feel about cemeteries. That kid's not there. That's the yeah. last place you're going to find him. So, November 26th of 2020, I took my entire group down there, group of 10, and they're all huddled around that damn brick waiting for something to happen. I know nothing's going to happen, so I'm trying to shoo them along, because we're also outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I'm trying mm -hmm. to be respectful. I didn't realize that I was out of bounds for tours that time of night. Um. The new owner of that mansion came out screaming. My youngest daughter, who was on a tour that night and was probably around 13 or 14 years old at the time, thought it was hysterical because her father was getting yelled at. She was all about it. She was cracking up laughing. The next day was Thanksgiving. I don't tour on Thanksgiving because I worked in upper management for Walmart for over 10 years, and you guys fight over towels on Thanksgiving. You scarred me for life. I don't do Thanksgiving anymore. <laughs> I don't do Walmart. Yeah, well, I said the same thing after I left, but here I am. I, I just have to stop them. <laughs> yeah, I guess you would. I'm yeah. to win. Uh, but you guys got the point. The next yeah. day was the 28th. I called my partner that brought me into tourism, away from retail management, and I was trying to figure out what to do next because I told him what happened with the neighbor. He laughed his ass off just like my daughter did and he said, dude, you're only allowed to go down about halfway. That's the cutoff for tours. Otherwise, it's considered residential that time of night and you're out of bounds. You're going to have to reroute your group. I was like, damn it, because the rest of my tour was that way. Now mm -hmm. I have to figure something out. So I told my group I don't believe in the next story because I'm into vampires, not pirates. Obviously, the main story would have been pirates. I don't think we're going to be able to do pirates tonight because that's the one we got kicked out of a few nights ago in the parking lot attendant. You got the point. Yeah. But anyway, before we left, uh, somebody actually heard the name Anne on a spirit box. I didn't tell them which pirate we were going to be investigating, the female pirate, Anne Bonnie. I was like, okay, maybe we'll get something. I took them around the corner. I told them what I did know about piracy in Charleston, which wasn't much because I remember only a quick day to research. And somebody else heard the number 300. I didn't know what that meant. So I wrote it down, I did the research. We were there November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720, the exact 300 year anniversary of her pirate trial. Wow. So I've been taking people back there night after night all the way up until last week, until I got booted out of there. Um, so I'm not a big person on pirates, but the story over there is usually pretty fantastic. If in the event, I'll, I'm, again, I'm probably not even gonna attempt it because that white truck's still gonna probably be parked over there waiting for a ghost tour to come by so he can have something to do. Um, but the bleed over from here is still going to carry over to where we're going. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, okay. Oh, the gate. I, the reason why I brought up the gate, by the way, with you earlier is because 
the gate was uh, obviously not part of the original alley. So you can, this was probably put here in the early 1900s. Uh, you can see that the archway is definitely part of the original part of that. Mm -hmm. Here's why. I already told you that the alley didn't go all the way through this way. So if there's a loser to the duel, just a few feet away from us, this was the shortcut to get to the cemetery on the other side of the wall. So otherwise they gotta walk all the way down to Queen Street and then double back with a dead body, which is obviously dead weight, very heavy, before right. they can go celebrate the winter with a pint. This way they can get over this courtyard and over to that cemetery very quickly. Um, so again, not a whole lot of people. I was wondering if that tour that you took actually knew why this gate was here, um, at least the archway. Because again, I still yeah. can't find the website where I found that piece of information. Um, and I've been saying this for the past four and a half years because again, I've been coming here that long. Uh, but I still can't find the website where I found that. I was like, oh, that's so cool because I've been calling it the Death Gate ever since I got into tourism. Um, so again, just uh, a weird thing. Yeah, no, I can't help you. Okay. Just wondering if you yeah. actually, if they even Sorry. brush you down here to talk about it because yeah. again, other ghost tours that come down here, they don't give you the cow alley bit. They're not telling you about the gate. Like they're just like, okay, here's the duel. Here's what happened. Listen for whistles when we leave. And yeah. everybody starts whistling as they cut through my group that's been standing here that don't know the whistling part of the story yet. Um, so yeah, they do it every night. But interesting cool. piece. All right, we're gonna yeah. go up around the corner. When we go over there, we're probably gonna swap cameras. Uh, okay. So that's where I'll be taking that from you when we get up and around the corner. Uh, you continue to listen. listen. Yep. And let me see if I have anything going on here. Yeah, a whole lot of nothing. Like, this list sucks tonight. So hopefully we start getting things as we go around the corner. Alright, let's go see what we can do over there. So I did get the word church. We talked about Church Street, where the doctor lived. Yeah. And we're going to Church Street. We're right next to it, so a big, big nod. Friday. So just a short vacation. Yeah. To get away. Yeah. I like to rest before I go and after I come home. Yeah, I do the same. <laughs> because after a week, you just want another couple of days to relax, you know. So this is the cemetery in between the two. Oh, correct. So we were literally standing right, right there. Over there. Before we do anything, let's swap the cameras. Alright. Turn right. this one off. Yep. 